It's a big honor for me to be face to face with my friend Maurice Abrao and we know this guy as a big name surgeon who had one of the biggest experience of uh, colorectal endometriosis because uh, one, of the, uh, one of the last publication uh, was covered more than 400 cases of colorectal resection and of course he is the author of numerous articles of the matter. I'm a young surgeon and I start to do my uh, colorectal resection in only 2015 uh, and the last three years uh, I performed uh, more than 100 cases of radical procedure case of colorectal endometriosis but maybe it's interesting for you I do this procedure myself from the beginning to the end. Uh, I would like to do to, to, to say about the statistical data uh, cover some tips and tricks of radical surgery uh, try to um, find, uh, show our and the uh, literature results of surgery, uh, complication of radical surgery and uh, what guidelines say. Uh, what does it mean radical and conservative surgery? Uh, we can talk about gistrectomy, colorectal resection, ileocecal resection, blood resection, ureter reimplantation as a part of radical surgery. And, and when we do shaving, discoid resection, or retrolysis, we can call this procedure conservative surgery. Uh, I would like to cover on the colorectal uh, procedure because, uh, as you see this slide, the percentage of this uh, nod nodal localization is high and uh, estimate approximately 93% uh, uh, of a patient with uh, all nodules. Uh, uh, in the left and right side of bowel. Uh, uh, this table shows us how grew the number of uh, um, radical procedure in case of colorectal endometriosis in my department and uh, in the last three years we, uh, we did approximately 100 procedure um, uh, of these three years. But uh, the number of uh, shaving and discoid is decreased uh, because the number of radical procedure is growing. Uh, why we can, uh, how we can separate the education for um, a radical surgery or surgery uh, 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 as a type of treatment of endometriosis? Uh, we can uh, talk about surgical indication. The surgical education are uh, following stenosis, bone hemorrhage, perforation of endometriosis nodal, recurrence of colorectal nodal after previous conservative surgery and of course suspected malignancy. We should do this uh, uh, surgery in case of IVF denial patients and uh, uh, who had two previous failure IVF protocol in good embryo quality. And of course uh, uh, the last group of uh, patients who were operated uh, uh, radically or conservatively in patients who had resistant pain uh, uh, instead of medication. Of course, it's important to have good diagnostic algorithm um, before surgery, and of course, it's important to know medical history and symptoms, uh, to do accurate uh, clinical examination and imaging, I mean a ultrasound and MRI. Uh, I do myself rectal vaginal examination and uh, ultrasound exam, and you believe me that if you do you, uh, this procedure yourself, you can find a lot of very important markers with uh, could help you uh, to build a good uh, surgical uh, program before surgery. And of course it's important to know fertility plans of this patient because in some case uh, uh, it should be better to uh, do IVF before surgery or offer this pa 
Education uh, Oversight Tracing Program. Uh, as I said before, for me, ultrasound exam is more important than MRI, but I do these two examinations uh, before surgery. This case showed me the place of nodule and the size of nodule. And of course, in this case, when the nodule is so long, more than 7 cm, and so deep, more than 12 mm, uh, we have to plan radical surgery instead of discoid resection or, um, or um, shaving. And another case confirmed the uh, place of ultrasound examination. Uh, during this one, we found uh, multifocal colorectal nodules, and uh, of course, it's an in, uh, indication for um, uh, colorectal resection instead of shaving or, uh, or uh, discoid resection. Of course, we are gynecologists, and uh, for us, it's more uh, um, suitable to confirm this uh, postulate. And I prefer to cover this uh, rectal wound by 3 4 uh, serous rows uterine to prevent some leakage of anastomosis. In this case, we changed uh, our strategy from shaving to discoid resection, and uh, at the end of this procedure, we decided to do segmental resection uh, because uh, the it was wrong estimate the size and how deep this nodule was. We started from uh, shaving. It was a so deep shaving with the open of bowel. In this moment, we decided to uh, do uh, discoid resection with a typical technique to push uh, this pathologic tissue inside the circular stapler. But at the end of this procedure, we uh, did ensure that we removed all pathologic tissue, and you see the uh, uh, thickness of uh, this. Uh, uh, rectal wall was so uh, small and uh, I think you agree with me that uh, to stay this tissue uh, it's very dangerous for uh, future complication and that is why we decide to remove this uh, uh, part of uh, colorectal junction jun 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 uh, during uh, segmental resection. At the end of the procedure, the, uh, this place looks very well and uh, we didn't have any kind of complications. Um, we should do very economical bowel resection because everybody knows that endometriosis is not cancer and this type of surgery uh, we can call radical, but it's not oncology case. We can save only 2-3 centimeters uh, uh, of the margin of the nodule and cut the tissue uh, here uh, without uh, any big size of uh, a spacing. But in case of multifocal nodules, uh, we have to remove bigger size of uh, uh, bowel. This uh, spacement demonstrate as uh, the multifocal nodule, one of them uh, uh, with the stenosis multifocal nodal with uh, colorectal and ileocecal stenosis. What's in use? We can do radical surgery without open access. These two videos demonstrate how we can do laparoscopically and uh, robotically. In my collection we have uh, 20 cases of uh, this nose technique without any complications and uh, really very good cosmetic and uh, um, post-op result. Because when we um, uh, prevent
prevent uh, open access, we prevent the uh, kind of complications such as hemorrhage, hematomas, uh, mm, uh, some kind of infection complication, and of course, uh, we have a good uh, cosmetic result. It's really end by end anastomosis. And if you do this uh, normal technique, you can save 2-3 cm uh, uh, up of rectum to prevent low anastomosis and, of course, uh, reduce the number of complications. And, of course, uh, we have a good uh, um, uh, aesthetic result of this surgery. Pay attention to check uh, right side of uh, abdominal uh, cavity before and during surgery where we start to do uh, laparoscopic treatment of colorectal endometriosis. Uh, you can identify the right side of nodule in 14% uh, of uh, the patients. It's really difficult to find this nodule uh, before surgery. This uh, ultrasound exam uh, um, shows us uh, the multifocal nodule of either sickle, a part of uh, the bowel, and uh, MRI confirmed this to show the multifocal model laterally and uh, up of the uterus. During surgery, we removed uh, approximately 70 cm of ileus uh, because uh, she had multifocal uh, stenosis nodules. Uh, do believe me that if you save this nodule uh, without any kind of treatment, this patient will be operated urgently due to obstruction. Why we performed radical surgery? Because we cannot find the local conditions for conservative surgery uh, in case of risks of uh, complication after conservative surgery and prolonged medication because uh, we, uh, when we prescribe a prolongation of medication we change the quality of tissue from the soft to strong to fibrosis and maybe it's the reason why a couple of patients had stenosis and obstruction. Uh, of course, we perform radical surgery in case of unsuccessful infertility treatment. Uh, who had previous uh, conservative uh, surgery, I mean the shaving or discoid resection, and uh, we have to operate this patient a uh, couple of years later. And uh, it's my opinion that anastomosis is better than deep shaving and disc resection. It's a controversial uh, question, but uh, I found a very interesting publication in uh, BMG Open in 2018, which confirmed that uh, the risks of uh, anastomosis complication in segmental resection group were three times less than a uh, group of shaving and disc resection. You can see this number of complications, 10 in a conservative group, uh, uh, 3.9 in uh, uh, radical tools. Of course, if you decide to do uh, conservative surgery, uh, we have to have conditions for this procedure. The conditions are following small load of infiltrate, uh, less than 4 cm, uh, bowel mucosa intact, bowel hemisphere involvement uh, less than 40%, and stenosis less than 30%. Uh, no multifocal nodules, no shaving before, as I said before, and if we say about the uh, right side of procedure, uh, we can uh, identify safe distance from ileocecal junction to the nodule. Uh, next part of my talk about what the guidelines say. These three guidelines were analyzed, uh, but I accept the ACG uh, uh, guideline because uh, there is no the indication of uh, radical and conservative surgery. Uh, the guideline focused only on um, uh, technical aspect, how we can do uh, shaving, disc resection or uh, segmental resection. But unfortunately, uh, most of these recommendations has a very low uh, level of uh, uh, evidence, uh, like a weak or a good practice point. Uh, First guideline published was uh, 2017, and uh, you can find the uh, uh, what does it mean uh, multidisciplinary team, what does it mean endometriosis centers, which kind of specialized could be involved of this uh, treatment. 
but uh, the conclusion was the radical surgical treatment of deep endometrial should be considered with expect a possible ovarian reserve reduction, lowering fertility in case of all complications. And actually, it's uh, fresh because uh, it was published in these years. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, most of this recommendation weak or GPP. Uh, the conclusion is surgical removal of deep endometriosis may be reduced of uh, Operative laparoscopy for deep endometriosis improved fertility. Uh, this procedure may represent a treatment option in symptomatic patients wishing to conceive. And what is more important than excision of uh, deep endometriosis lesion prior to IVF uh, should be guided mainly by pain symptoms and patient reference and the effectiveness on the productive outcome. Positively impacts fertility outcome. This guideline recommended for lesion of the sigmoid column a segmental resection should be performed. For deep endometriosis involving the rectum, a more tailored approach can be chosen. Uh, what we now know that surgery is better than medications, excision is better than ablation, sigmoid no if we find sigmoid nodal, segmental resection should be performed, and in case of rectal nodal, I hope uh, all of us uh, uh, agree with this postulate, you can uh, um, yeah, try to find the more tailored the kind of surgery such as discoid resection or shaving. Uh, we really can improve the quality of life. I estimate uh, the uh, level of uh, compliance, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia in uh, my group of patients who had operated radically. And you can see how we can improve the, uh, this complaints according to VAC uh, from 7 to point to 0 7 after 12 months after surgery. We have the same, uh, the same uh, uh, figures in when we estimate chronic pelvic pain in this case here uh, from 5.2 to 0 0.5 after 12 months after surgery. Uh, about fertility and uh, uh, deep endometriosis and the role of radical surgery uh, to treat the uh, infertility. Uh, I think everybody knows this very interesting uh, a publication from 2009 uh, by Stepnevska and Marcella Cecaroni. Uh, they concluded that bowel endometriosis negatively influenced fecundity. Uh, the incident of endometriosis recurrence was high in bowel endometriosis was not resected, 25 versus 8.3. And indication for bowel resection in infertile women may be represented by important bowel stenosis and severe pelvic pain. Of course, it does mean that all patients with uh, uh, bowel endometriosis and infertility should be operated radically with bowel segmental resection. Uh, we uh, estimate the number of overall pregnancy rate and spontaneous pregnancy rate and IV pregnancy rate in our group. 25 patients who were operated conservatively and radically in my department. And you see that the number of overall pregnancy rate and spontaneous pregnancy rate uh, is better in radical group. But what is more important, the age where operated should be done. Uh, and when we operate young women, 20 to 30 years old, the number of pregnancy rate is so high and we can wait approximately 50% of spontaneous uh, pregnancy in this group. But if you do the surgery in all the patient, more than 40 years old, we didn't find any pregnancy in this group. Uh, what about pregnancy and IVF? And pregnancy and uh, deep endometriosis? This very, uh, very interesting publication uh, from my 
a colleague and my friend uh, Maurice Abrao in 2020, uh, they concluded that pregnancy rate preparations, pregnancy rate per cycle, and live birth rate preparations was more than two times uh, higher for operated patient than for non-operated one. And high pregnancy rate preparations for surgical before IFA. It's a very important conclusion. Uh, we can recommend surgery to treat uh, 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 DIA-associated uh, infertility. And uh, last part of my talk about complications. This data analyzed uh, approximately 400 cases of uh, uh, bowel resection and they concluded that major complication of deep uh, endometriosis surgery amounted to 13% and 5% uh, or around this complication is leakage of anastomosis. But what is more important that most of those patients have a good long-term clinical outcome irrespective of the complications. Uh, I don't agree with this so high level of complications and uh, I find this last uh, uh, paper from Manzoni group which confirmed the number of uh, anastomosis leakage is less and uh, uh, he published 1.6% of this uh, uh, this complication, but unfortunately the percent of uh, uh, dysfunction of bowel is uh, so high in this approximately 20%. This is my uh, uh, data uh, and uh, you can see that the number of anastomosis leakage is uh, less than 1%. We have approximately 20% of functional disorder of the blood and the bowel. We don't have rectovaginal fistula and one case is of bowel stenosis and rectal bleeding. And uh, last is uh, endometriosis state malignant tumor associated with deep infiltrated endometriosis. We published this data in 2019 in our National Bulletin of Obstetrician and Gynecologist. We found three cases of uh, malignancy and uh, adenocarcinoma in the uh, endometriosis nodule where Performed, were uh, identified during histological examination. Mm -hmm. As a conclusion, I would like to say that there are approximately 50 uh, doctors and I think most of us surgeons and all of us are great surgeons and have a neck uh, for radical surgery. Uh, I don't uh, talk much uh, a lot of surgery uh, because in the nearest future we will not perform surgical treatment because we will have a big list of medication and the prescribing medication uh, uh, instead of uh, doing some surgery. But surgery is still important now and uh, uh, of course it's a very difficult solution which kind of procedure is better for patient and uh, why? Because there is a shortage of evidence uh, which kind of surgery is better. But when we start to plan and we start to do conservative surgery, we should be ready to perform radical surgery. Maybe it's a time to create a new profile surgical uh, pelvic surgeon who are able to perform complete procedure by oneself from the beginner to the end. And of course it's important the role of patients because patients should decide about advantages or disadvantages of all type of uh, this treatment. Just patient's decision will be crucial in the next surgical strategy. In a last slide about RT and advantage surgery. I don't know the situation in your country, but in my country the number of IT center is growing uh, radically uh, and the, the majority of this center do not have facility to perform surgery. And of course the importance of reproductive surgery is actually neglected. Most of studies are originally oriented on recommendation of uh, IRT as major method of infertility treatment. But surgery is not diet and I think we have to estimate the number of uh, uh, pregnancy rate close to 70% infertile patients after adequate and timely operation. It means that 
uh, two from those patients with DIA and the mature state infertility do not need IRT at all. And uh, it's a big honor uh, for me to invite all of you in the uh, next Asia conference, which will be held in Moscow in October in this year. Uh, I would like to see all of us in our capital. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Popov, for the excellent uh, talk. Uh, we will have a questions in the debate later. We will have Dr. Abraham, who will um, go uh, forward with the conservative approach um, of uh, endometriosis. Thank you for this very nice invitation to, to be here. I'd like to thank George and Paco as well. It's a, an honor and a privilege to be here with you. And, and uh, the idea here is to, is to speak about the advantages of radical surgery versus conservative surgery focusing on when the conservative surgery uh, can be performed, right? So I have nothing, uh, no financial relationships to disclosure. And the, the first concept, Alex, that it's something that is, is very relevant for us to start speaking, is that there are two ways for us to think about being conservative. The first way is when we think about bowel endometriosis because we can do a segmental resection or we can be conservative doing a disc resection or a shaving procedure. The other way to be conservative is to decide when we need or we can leave disease behind. That I think that is something that I, I would like to address here. So for us to move ahead and discuss some details about this and even talking about algorithms that can allow us to decide when to do a radical procedure or a conservative procedure, I would like to start just updating some concepts that I think that are very relevant when we talk about endometriosis, starting from the idea that endometriosis is not glands and or stromas outside of the uterus. Uh, nowadays, we have some studies showing that the fibrosis plays a very important role for endometriosis and for sure, according to this publication from the group of Paola Vigano and Edgardo Sumiliano, that uh, it must receive more attention as potential targets of medical treatment for endometriosis. Animal models should include uh, fibrosis right, for us to, to decide how to treat properly the disease and the definition should include fibrosis as well. So this is the first thing that I would like to, to, to comment here when we go towards an algorithm to decide when to be conservative or not. The second thing is the concept of the surgery driven by uh, imaging, right? And this is a very important example for us. This is a patient that came to, to us with this uh, DVD from a laparoscopy that she already did uh, two months before the first appointment with our team and then showing that the colleague that did this procedure uh, he did this kind of conservative treatment. He coagulated the tip of the iceberg and uh, he uh, uh, made a biopsy proving that this lesion was an endometriosis. But of course the patient after two months had a lot of pain uh, since because uh, she, uh, the, the, the disease was left there. So this is a way to be conservative that we don't think that is a good way to be conservative, right? So we did this imaging method, uh, we did this ultrasound with a very simple bowel preparation that is our protocol. We identify uh, a big nodule of endometriosis, not that big, less than three centimeters, compromising the rectum, and then we suggested, unfortunately for her, because uh, it was a new surgery just after the, the first procedure, a, 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 another surgery. When we approached properly the, the disease, right, 
starting from the pararectal nodules and uh, opening the spaces and removing that lesion that was left behind, meaning that this is the way to be conservative that with a good imaging method before the exam, we should plan uh, properly how to treat the disease, removing the nodule that really justifies uh, the pain of the patient, as you can see here, and in this case, we did a shaving. So, uh, it means that this, uh, the way for us to plan the procedure and to define when to be conservative and when to be radical starts from uh, a good imaging method and after some publications from our team we, we, we show that it's possible with a very high accuracy to, 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 to check the bowel, to check the deep endometriosis compromising for example the retrocervical uh, region with a uh, sensitivity uh, very good, 98% for the rectum and 95% for the bowel, even better than uh, MRI. And more than this, we can use the imaging methods uh, to check other details like the deepest layer compromised by the disease, the size of the lesion, the circumference of the bowel that is compromised by endometriosis, and the distance between the lower lesion and the anal verge. And more recently, we uh, are diagnosing more and more peritoneal endometriosis. That was the, the only part of the imaging that was missing in terms of the, the diagnosis. And this is a paper that is coming soon, showing that it's possible to do it. Coming to the, to the concept that, for sure, we don't have space anymore for the concept of diagnostic laparoscopy. Uh, according to this study that we published last year, uh, the, the ultrasound can be even better than, uh, than the laparoscopy for this purpose. And here we, we proved this, this issue, showing that uh, the ultrasound is better than diagnostic laparoscopy to predict the sites of endometriosis and bio, bowel disease that has a good accuracy for staging the disease and it can replace the diagnostic laparoscopy for the surgical planning for, for endometriosis. So, uh, according to this concept, for sure, we can define uh, much better nowadays the way to go, when to be conservative, how to be conservative, and when to be radical for this purpose. The third issue that I would like to address here is the, the needs for a new classification. This is something that we are working uh, a lot in the last uh, 10 years, uh, looking for a more transparent way for us to, to, to use a classification to, to, to know precisely where is the disease, right? So we know that very few classifications uh, address the deep endometriosis, only ends in score nowadays and, and, and the new classification that I'm going to show you. But uh, looking for this uh, target here, right? That a good criteria for a good classification is to be easy to perform, to have a high reproductibility, to be helpful across a wide range of endometriosis, to be helpful to predict the prognosis of the disease, and to have a correlation with surgical difficulty. So by this way, there is this, this study that was published in the end of last year, where uh, it was calculating uh, mean scores for uh, endometriosis uh, for real sites of the disease, not, for example, using a cul de sac obliteration to think about endometriosis compromising the bowel, that was the concept of ASRM. And uh, we, 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 we ended with a concept of a four stages, but with a very precise uh, way to think about the disease. And then there is this app that uh, I recommend all, all of the experts of endometriosis to download, in, in the app store, right, showing that we can uh, start the procedure, right, uh, in the app, if you download it, you will see the paper there, and then you can click here uh, uh, for, for us to stage the disease according to the surgical findings, and uh, soon we are going to have another way to click here to stage the disease using imaging, right, and then we can click the, the uh, in, in all of the the, the sites of the disease, right, according, for example, if there is endometriosis compromised in the rectum, peritoneal, ovaries, and ending with 
uh, uh, distribution of the, the scores, right? And with the, the stage, and we can export, creating a PDF, right? And sending the PDF to, to the reports of the patients or, or even uh, to, to showing the patients the, the real stage of the disease. So, using these three initial concepts, I would like to discuss the algorithms for the disease, right? For us to, de to define when to be radical, when to be conservative. So when, how do we proceed nowadays in our practice uh, in Sao Paulo? We start looking for the symptom, the main symptom of the patient. Uh, if the patient has pain or if she has pain and infertility, right? And uh, the first issue when she has pain, right, is to define the, uh, in terms of the visual analogic scale, the relevance of the pain. And if the pain is very relevant and the imaging method can show us uh, that uh, she has endometriosis, advanced endometriosis or deep endometriosis or, or other kinds of the disease, we can uh, recommend the surgical treatment. Otherwise, uh, if the, she doesn't have a relevant pain, the medical treatment is an option, right? Uh, thinking here that this is the first step for us to, to consider uh, the conservative uh, treatment for the disease. And if she has infertility, of course, it depends also on the, the ovarian reservative of the patient for us to define how to be uh, radical or not. And looking for the bowel disease, right, according to this study that we published five years ago with, with uh, uh, the colleagues that uh, are here with uh, Charles, Felici, uh, and also Yutaka, uh, Jorg, and, and Tommaso, we uh, defined that the, the algorithm now thinking of the conservative treatment, meaning that we are going to remove the disease, the entire disease, but not being radical with the bowel in all times, we, when there is uh, pain, and unique nodule is smaller than three centimeters, we can be more conservative doing shaving or nodule resection. If the nodule is larger than three centimeters or multiple nodules, the segmental resection is recommended. But when there is no pain and no urinary obstruction or no uh, bowel obstruction, we can be more conservative looking for a medical treatment to treat the symptoms and we know that we are not treating the disease we are treating the symptoms and then we can control with uh, imaging and clinical uh, follow-up for the patient if it's stable it's okay right uh, we can proceed like like this if if the disease increase or if we have an inc uh, in, uh, increase of the pain we can recommend the surgery and the same we think about infertility, but the difference here is that we start with the clinical evaluation, we do the imaging uh, for endometriosis, and we evaluate the ovarian reserve. And when the, uh, the, there is a, uh, the pain is not uh, important, it's less than seven in the visual analogic scale, uh, we can uh, recommend uh, induction of ovulation or even IVF depending of the tubal patency. If there is a, a relevant pain but the ovarian reserve is low or the patient is mo uh, has more than 30 years old, the cryopreservation must be considered. Otherwise, we can uh, go to surgery, right, and then uh, treating the infertility in the same manner that I mentioned before. So again, this is another way to think about being radical or conservative, following an algorithm in terms of what we have here. And the other important uh, uh, perspective that we have is when we think about to optimize the planning following the, the, the bowel resection uh, the, or, or the, the bowel treatment for endometriosis. As you can see here, uh, in this study, we, we evaluated 170 cases of endometriosis compromising the bowel, where we recommended uh, shaving, discoid resection, or segmental resection. And the issue was to see 
in how many cases we do what we recommend, right? And uh, the, the, and of course we can change during the procedure, but this is very relevant for us to discuss with the patient before and to plan the procedure properly, defining when to be radical or conservative. And here, the conclusion of this study is that in 85% of the cases, according to this following this algorithm, we do what we plan. And in 15% of the cases, we may change the procedure during the surgery. In, in among this 15%, we know that uh, in, in half of this 15%, we upstage the procedure, and in half of this procedure, uh, we downstage the procedure, meaning that if we recommend that, for example, this resection, we may do in 7.5% a segmental resection or 7.5% uh, a shaving procedure. And to conclude, when to be conservative uh, combined with medical therapy as an option when we can leave disease behind, right? The first thing that I would like to mention here is some of the studies that are looking for the ovarian reserve for ovarian endometriosis. Uh, this is one very important study, right, from uh, Candiani, showing that when we remove the capsule, the reduction of the viral reserve is much more important than when we just uh, coagulate or we use laser in, in the ovaries. And when we talk about laser, we can use different types of laser, we can use CO2, we can use diode laser, as you can see here in this small video, right? Uh, when we try to avoid removing the capsule with uh, primary folliculus uh, try to, to take care of the ovarian reserve. We can also do the same with argon plasma, as you can see here, right? And uh, uh, try to, to, to have the same goal, right? To preserve the ovarian reserve. And the other important thing is this publication that we did uh, two years ago, uh, showing that sometimes uh, uh, we, we did a follow-up of patients that were waiting for surgery in our public hospital in Sao Paulo. And we had more than 100 cases that we didn't have surgery for many reasons. So in, for three years we did a follow-up of these patients, right? And uh, in this follow-up we realized that uh, symptoms were not related uh, to, with the progression of the lesion. Uh, over time, that is very important, right? And the bowel lesion may significantly decrease over time in patients after menopause, this is important for us to mention, that there is no difference in the bowel lesion length between patients with and without hormonal treatment, and clinical and sonographic follow-up is very important for this purpose. Just to conclude that there are some situations that we can consider leaving disease behind. First of all, ovarian endometriosis with low ovarian reserve. And, uh, and uh, second, deep endometriosis with, without sy symptoms or with uh, not relevant pain. Third, when the risk of surgery is higher than the benefits, right? Uh, imagine that we have a bilateral uh, hypogastric nerve compromising in an endometriosis, and sometimes the risk is higher for us to have bowel uh, complications or, or urinary function complications as well. And the other fourth uh, indication, uh, the menopause with bowel uh, or uh, urinary obstruction, without bowel or urinary obstruction, uh, should be uh, also uh, an, an alternative for us to be conservative, but always with a clinic and a good radiologic or sonographic follow-up that is very relevant for this purpose. And for sure, I agree with Alex that the future, of course, is for us to have new treatments to treat the disease, not only the symptoms, much less surgery, safety, and new alternatives for surgery, right, for us to, to be more efficient for the patients. Thank you so much. of you for the excellent lecture and compliance discussion 
if you have any comment or question, if you want, I can start. Actually, for your practice, not the literature, what is the real indication for this characterization, except what was size and multifocality? What is your clinical indication or surgical indication? We have to do model excision or segmental excision, it's quite a Good question. Uh, for me, discoid transaction is a good procedure uh, in case of low uh, uh, level of uh, nodule. And in this case, we try to avoid to do segmental resection due to a uh, high level of uh, leakage of anastomosis and the other kind of uh, uh, surgical, uh, surgical complications. What do you mean low level? Approximately less than 8, 6 centimeters. Uh, 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 I prefer to use the same technique as uh, Horace Roman showed us yesterday. We uh, remove uh, a big part of this nodule and after that use a big size of circular stapler through the anal channel to push uh, the pathology tissue inside the uh, step stapler and do uh, segmental uh, uh, discoid reduction. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, this is an important question. And uh, for sure, first, we, we, we are driven completely by imaging when we, we decide when to do a disc resection or not. So the size is very important, even because in 2008 uh, we, we made a very simple study showing that when we have lesions with less than, with more than three, three centimeters, and deeper than the submucosa, we have more than 40% of the circumference compromised by, by, of the bubble. So, uh, the, the problem is that when we have bigger lesions, the lesion doesn't fit in the circular stapler, right? And we tend to leave disease behind in that bubble and we try to avoid uh, this issue for, of course, because uh, the goal of doing uh, one shot surgery is a very important goal for this purpose. So, again, the size of the lesion is relevant for us, right? And I agree that the distance between the other verse is an additional topic to be honest. The only thing that can be discussed is when to do a double disc resection. That there are some few studies showing that you can use a disc resection and a second disc resection for the same patient. Uh, we don't do it nowadays. We think that the angle of the rectum, uh, we, we need more studies. We, we, we are thinking of doing a study in animals to check the angle, right? Uh, because, you know, when you do a disc resection, there is an angle, uh, the angle changes, and the second disc resection, the angle changes more. So this is something that, uh, for sure, we try to avoid. I have a very short comment about the uh asymptomatic patient and of course uh, I think this group of patients doesn't need any kind of surgery, any kind of treatment. We can wait and uh, if you remember one of the uh, previous publications by Jacques Donnet, uh, he showed us a very good example that more than 83% uh, of these patients uh, uh, will not have any kind of symptoms uh, when we Observed it during a long period, more than 20 years or so, oh, yeah. I totally agree with you. The nodule is not cancer, and uh, we can save this uh, nodule without any kind of treatment. Any other question, comment? Please. Thank you very much for your excellent talks. Uh, Master Scott of Abbas from here, from Athens. Uh, I would like to ask both. Uh, I understand that the, the, the size issue is important, of course. Uh, especially you, Alex, that you have seen my technique of uh, open uh, discoid bowel uh, section with, with uh, open meaning uh, closing the defect with sutures. Um, I think this is an idea of how to avoid a segmental resection by doing more conservative surgery without using the circular stapler. I would like to comment from both. 
I used to uh, open technique and uh, suturing uh, uh, when we uh, uh, did uh, this procedure without any kind of steppers. But I think it's easy and more safety to perform circular step. But I remember your comment about the it's a really disc or maybe a circular resection of mucosa during uh, uh, a discoid resection. And uh, I have uh, 10, maybe 10, maybe more cases with the flexible sigmoidoscopy immediately after disc resection. And I confirmed that it's not so disc resection, it's a circular resection. But it's not so deep, especially in posterior wall or rectum. It's only mucosa resection, but it's not disc, it's a circular. Mm -hmm. Professor Brown? No, I, I agree with Alex, and we tend to not use, to, to use always a, a, a staper, uh, mainly the circular staper, uh, because we think that it's safer for the, the procedure instead of doing uh, the disc resection without a staper. It's a, it's a possibility we did in the past, we stopped doing because of the complication rates that improved a lot with the staper, and there is, there is another uh, possibility that I didn't mention here for us to do it with a linear staper. There is a, a, a group in Brazil as well from Paula Rosa that they like to do it using uh, uh, multiple linear stapers uh, for this purpose. But I prefer to, to use the circular staper when the, 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 the algorithm fits that rules that I mentioned before. Okay, thank you. Your algorithm is a rule in my department. <laughs> Another question. And five years ago, I believe in 2017, John Hopkins and the Vancouver show us the deep endometriosis has the uh, cancer by mutations, spontaneously, deep patients without malignancy. You show us another one, but it's, I don't see that the literature. This is the Russian, right? Yeah, it's a, our publication. This is our national uh, bulletin of the But the language is the Russian, Russian language. Okay. It's very short, uh, short, abstract. There is no other, other uh, language, other uh, publication, English one, uh, to approve a uh, deep endometriosis patient mm -hmm. has uh, cancer viral mutation. It's important. When you cite the uh, conservative treatment, would you mind this one? Maybe she will have the risk for the malignancy in the future if you compare with the just endometriosis patient. We did uh, a few systematic reviews related to endometriosis and cancer in the last years, and we didn't find any relevant correlation between deep endometriosis and cancer. There is a correlation between ovarian disease and cancer, but not deep endometriosis. But maybe it's one of the reasons uh, how we can observe this patient before surgery. And the MRI with contrast, it's uh, the best of choice to uh, rethinking about this patient and maybe uh, be more radical in case of suspected mass in uh, uh, rectum or uh, uterus. Any other question, comment? It must uh, another question, last one. <laughs> Do you believe just deep animators nodule has an etiology for the Fertility, just module, not other ones. Do you believe as etiology or infertility? Uh, it's a good question. I think it, no time we discuss about this issue. Yes, yes. No, the short yes, answer. Sure. Yeah, but in my daily practice, uh, we do uh, surgery in case of uh, 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 IVF uh, uh, failure patient because what's the way to uh, treat this? Uh, 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 infertile patient. We do two, three failed protocol of IVF and uh, uh, she uh, doesn't have pregnancy and uh, not the removal may be one of the way to improve the number of pregnancy. But I not be sure that only nodal uh, uh, plays a uh, negative role of infertility. I think infertility in, in endometriosis patient is really multifactor. And if we didn't find any kind of other uh, phenotype of uh, endometriosis, it doesn't mean that uh, only nodal uh, is uh, the cause of infertility. As a 
specialist opinion, I do believe, after doing many cases, many studies on immunology and inflammation, I, I tend to believe. But in our algorithm, we, when the patient doesn't have pain, we only recommend surgery after two IVF failures. First one. As a first approach, you prefer IVF? IVF, if she doesn't have pain, and she has, uh, doesn't have a normal tubal patency, I start with IVF, and after two failures, uh, we recommend surgery. Any question, comment? Mm -hmm. I Thank you very much. Could it be in that instance that we would think about more conservative shaving surgery rather than discoid or uh, uh, segmental resection in asymptomatic infertile patients with uh, two uh, failures in IVF? Uh, I use it the same algorithm in my department, and uh, uh, infertility is not indicated for uh, resection or discoid resection or shaving. It's only symptomatic patient with infertility and pain. In this case, we decide to uh, uh, prefer surgery. But uh, IVF in this patient is the best the solution to be pregnant uh, without any kind of surgery. After two IVF failures that we were thinking about doing uh, surgery or uh, pre-IVF trying for surgery, where someone would do deep endometriosis, deep endometriosis, but then we think about the bowel, would at the first instance shaving be a good idea for rectal asymptomatic endometriosis and infertility or after 12 years for you? First of all, we need special conditions to do uh, conservative surgery, local special conditions. I mean, uh, size of nodal, multi or single nodal, uh, etc. But uh, as I said before, we send this patient before surgery to IVF uh, or maybe uh, offer this patient uh, off-site uh, or um, uh, embryo um, uh, freeze program and after that decide to do a surgery or not. But during surgery, of course, we can change our plan from uh, conservative to radical or from radical to conservative. I totally agree with that, now, Mavi, that uh, we should be more flexible, like a tailor, yeah? It's the same tailor surgery, yeah, it's a very important call for this uh, pathology. Okay. okay, thank you for being us, thank you for the good discussion, I hope all of uh, us for this debate. Now we will move on to...